So thank you for coming back again. Last week was huge. I mean, really, it was what I consider the game changer. Mm -hmm. Because what we talked about was the concept of innate needs. And really importantly, how children, very young, are already starting to fill them. Mm. You know, they, they don't even consciously know, but they're there, right? And I wanna ask Brent, you have a green child. I do. Yeah, and I know that after we spoke about those innate needs, I have a feeling a couple more stories came up. Tell yeah, me about those. Quite a few. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got a, a second home. Mm -hmm. The coast house is down on the Georgia coast. We love it. It's great getaway. Okay. But we don't live there all the time, so there's always task, work <laughs> that we can divide up. And, and purposefully, uh, my wife Tracy and I, we didn't want it something that the kids felt we were always working. Okay. So it's like get the work done and quicker to fun, right? <laughs> so Caleb's And in that order. In that in, order. In that work order. done and then mm -hmm. quick to fun. So I, I need that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> <Auto>. Seriously. <laughs> So, so I assigned my, my green son, Caleb, mm -hmm. the task of, there's always limbs down, right? So, you know, big live oak trees and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So he had to pick up the limbs and then he had to take them by the uh, fire pit for mm -hmm. firewood. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Brent, was there, from the time you arrived, is it like immediately, let's, let's go ahead and start? Let's get it done and then, and then on with it, right? So. He's unloading the car just, and the no. bus. And he's going. Yeah, yeah you got on the bus. Got on the bus. Get, get down bus. there. Get it done, right? Get it done. And so, and, and by the way, um, it's a gathering place for my family, right? So my 83-year-old mom mm -hmm. is bending over. She's weeding, right? Mm -hmm. And my 81-year-old dad has got the lawnmower ready to go, but he needs the limbs out of the way. Okay. So he can mow. So Caleb had his task. Well, Caleb was much more interested in a photo shoot of his cousin mm -hmm. and finding the perfect lens and the perfect aperture and the perfect location. So he's nowhere to be found when it's, you know, all these other people are waiting for him to get done. I'm like, mm -hmm. your grandparents can get the work done. Why can't you get it? Done? Mm -hmm. So now that we've talked about some of the innate needs for the green, harmony, lack of stress, feeling of worth and respect. And they all have definitions, right? I'm gonna pinpoint a little bit lack of stress, right? Um, and respect. Lack of stress is combative words. Respect is being asked for their opinion or their ideas. If you were just to think of those two innate needs now, what might that scenario look a little differently? Well, but in that moment, if I really wanted an opinion from him, I would have given it to him. I mean, seriously. I know. It's not negotiating. It, it is not time to negotiate or be respected. It's just everybody, it's work done. everybody has a role. Yes. Look at your grandma. She's bent over picking up weeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get the work done. And if you get it done, there, there won't be stress. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> we can worry about respect and lack of stress later. Okay. Uh -huh. But was that working for you? No. What, how many times did you look for Caleb? Too many. Yeah. And See? each time the, the, the one too many the exactly. anger level went up. Right. Yeah. So what I'm asking you is, if you would have thought to ask for his opinion or idea of how the day might have played out, how might have that changed the situation? Yeah, but I, I just don't get that. Am I am I supposed to go to Caleb? Please. <laughs> hey, on your timetable. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. just go take pictures now. Nobody's waiting. It's mm -hmm. not. Don't worry about the work. Just whenever you get to it. <laughs> yeah. Are you Wait, kidding me? Yeah, I, I mean, no, who no, does no, that? But right. I'm wondering because I do some photography. Like, was it the right time of day for him? Oh, to the golden that? hour. Yeah. Yes, I've what learned all about the golden hour. Yeah. I can tell he's very he sensitive might... to golden yeah. hour. Yeah. But so it was, quotes, right? no, it was yeah. not the golden okay. hour. Yeah. So um, it was I, the heat of the day. Yeah. So, so. But Kathleen, yes. this is the problem I have is yes. that we, we have a green child. Yes. And oftentimes I do feel like, well, just because you're green doesn't mean that you get out of the work. I mean, right. we got to get the kitchen cleaned up. Everybody's right. got a role to play. We got to get the sticks yes. up. Yes. Right. So you're, right. please tell me you're not saying let the green off the hook. No. Mm. Never. <laughs> no, never. I don't think the green... the green is always trying to make it bad for everyone else either. I think it's sort of a, a sometimes for me, it's a catch to 
try and remember that what I'm after can't really be achieved until after the work is done. But sometimes the work seems overwhelming to get past. Like for whatever reason, whether it's not something I'm interested in or, uh, and especially as a kid, mm -hmm. I just even chores on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. It's Saturday. It's the one day Can't that I could sleep relax? in. Can't we just right. relax? Mm -hmm. But I've learned as I've gotten older that what I'm looking for is on the other side of that. Wow. But as a kid, I'm not, I wasn't thinking about what was on the other side. There was none I'm of just, that. I'm just mm -hmm. curious. So when I say, um, I'm asking Brent to pause, right? Because I'm all about the pause. And if I was to say to him, pause and ask for Caleb's opinion or idea, we're not necessarily asking him to change everybody's schedule. What we're asking is how does he see the day? And if that was asked of you and you think you're agreeing, what might you say? Well, I would want to get there and kind of take everything in mm -hmm. and enjoy it a little mm -hmm. bit before I got to the task, mm -hmm. because if the trip is about vacation, then for mm -hmm. me, that's going to look like relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I, I always respond better to teamwork. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, they're doing this, and they're doing this, mm -hmm. and knowing ahead of time what my part in the team, mm -hmm. in the teamwork or the work is, mm -hmm. and why it's important that I do it. Mm -hmm. Not in a pressured sense, but in a thinking about it beforehand. I did better knowing what clearly what was expected of me, maybe even how much time somebody thought it might take, mm -hmm. and then the reward on the other side. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I was always like, okay, I'll clean my room so that I can have somebody over to spend the night. Mm -hmm. Not just to have a clean room. Mm -hmm. That just was never a motivator right. for me. <laughs> so, so articulately said, as you're hearing this, are mm -hmm. you replaying it's so, so hard, though, to, to think of the carrot for a green, right? Mm -hmm. I know what the stick is, mm -hmm. but the carrot the in front carrot, of them, I just... But you do know. You do know, because you even told all of us, right? We could all answer that question. The carrot was, he was so interested in taking photos of his cousin. That was his interest. Well, so right. do I get him to get his cousin out in front of the sticks and have her pick up the sticks while he's <laughs> photographing her picking up the sticks doing the work? That's the move. That's, That's the move. That's it. That's it. No. What we want to do is we want to ask him a time frame. Hey, it's going to look something like this. I know it's not your favorite, and it may not be the thing you're totally interested in. But what I do know is that if we all work together and your part will be the wood— It'll take as long as you give it to take. You could probably knock that out, buddy, just like you did last time. Because I know Always how, revisit where such a green. I know how great you are at doing that. Exactly. And that you did it before. Like, greens always want to hear how they were successful before in the revisit. You know, remember when you knocked out, when you and I built that shed? We did it in, like, half the time. Well, if you do that, that leaves you the whole afternoon to find, to do what I know you're most interested in. And that's to take pictures and find the best time of day. But I would like to hear what your thoughts and opinions are of what the day looks like. And Even he'll, though and I then, don't want to hear his thoughts yes, and opinions yes, of because the day. What if it, I don't want to hear it? <laughs> because the point is, if you want to love him better, you have to honor his design. That's huge. And if he says, you know what? Gosh, I didn't really think about that. But dang, if I could get so-and-so to help me with the logs, I could be looking at the set at 2 o'clock. Great idea, Dad. Now he's feeling valued. There's harmony. There's no combative words. His opinions and thoughts and feelings, you told him they mattered in the day. Now his love tank is getting filled. And he's not putting his heels in or procrastinating or withdraw or hiding because he's really, truly not interested in picking up the logs. And you're never gonna change that. But you can change that he's interested in being part of the team. You can change that he has a part to play in harmony. You can change that, yes, he was valuable before and you believe he'll be valuable again. You can change that his opinion matters. So it sounds like we're really getting this, you know, and that story of the innate needs and connecting all those dots absolutely teed us up perfectly for what we're gonna talk about today, and that's signals. Your story was a perfect example of some signals being 
really set off. But let's recap the, the yellows and eight needs. Attention, affection, approval, and acceptance. So what we want to know is, this is a signal. When these innate needs are not being filled, mm. there's a signal that's sent off. And what the signals are for the yellow is charm and flattery. And this is really important because remember, we talked a little bit about a love tank. And in this love tank is the innate needs. And we are trying to influence children to fill these innate needs with their strengths. If they fill them with their strengths, then this love tank is filled and they have something to pour into another person. If they're filling this love tank with their weaknesses, it's like it has a little crack in it. Mm. And this little crack, all of a sudden, being obnoxious doesn't work, or bossy, or moody, or unenthusiastic, and they're trying to fill these innate needs in the crack, and it's gonna leak out, and it's gonna spell these signals. Because all of a sudden, for a yellow, being obnoxious, loud, interrupting, isn't working. Mm. So now it's gonna leak out and it's gonna spell charm and flattery. So when I'm driving down mm. the road and I, my gas is low, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the light that turns on. This is a light that turns on and it tells you that there's something that needs attention. Mm. So charm, exaggerating or elaborating way over the top. Flattery, <laughs> phony or excessive praise of other people. So what does that look like? You might have a young child that starts singing a song and they're trying to get the attention and they're interrupting. And this can be in a home or in a classroom. And now they're singing louder and then they're singing louder and they will sing louder and louder and interrupt and interrupt to get attention till somebody turns around and looks at them. Mm -hmm because they're thinking, look at me, look at me. And what are wow. they doing? They're doing, and then the louder doesn't work. So all of a sudden they turn and they go, oh, you're the best mommy in the world. When you <laughs> listen to my songs, I always feel so good. Oh, you're the best teacher in the world. You let me sing in front of the class and they all clap for me. Do you see what I'm saying? It, That's a big deal. I it mean, is a big deal. I just think of my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, how she can, the, the difference of maybe words of affirmation or words that are truthful, mm -hmm. and she leans in and gives me a hug, then I feel like her protector or, you know, a guardian, and it feels great. Mm -hmm. But if it's flattery, mm -hmm. it just feels empty and flat. And She's trying to get, get something. Get something out of it. <laughs> yeah, or it's like, okay, are you, you do you want the wallet? What, what are you asking exactly. for here? You it's know. usually the wallet, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, forget yeah. the kissing, the hugging, yeah. you know. The yeah. words, it yeah. just feels, it feels misses odd. the mark. Yeah. Well, I didn't think about it. When you said, particularly with charm, I think of charm in more a positive sense, that that's the skill in a lot of ways of the mm -hmm. yellow, the, the ability to be winsome, to mm -hmm. win others over. But um, I really, I like that definition of charm, that you're, um, you're, you're having to force it, you're having mm -hmm. to try, and it really... It, it's as if it has a, the, the outcome is manipulative, that you're yes. trying to get someone to do something for you because you're empty mm -hmm. versus a more genuine uh, likability where you're genuinely trying to help someone and mm -hmm. do something Which the yellow them. is completely wired for. They're magnetic. And when they're in their strengths, everybody wants to be by them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, most people that come in my office think that they want to be yellow. And so there is a definite difference between being magnetic mm -hmm. in your strengths and in your weaknesses being phony yep. and charming yep. just to get that, trying to get that same yep. feeling back. So right? it's a matter of motive. Yeah, always. It's remember, That's everything good. has co come from a core mm -hmm. motivator and the core motivator is your temperament. Mm. Okay. Why you do something is different than why Clay does something. Yeah, right? and you can imagine that a, yeah. a kid yeah. would find it difficult to pinpoint that their motive. Wow, is, that is so true. Is, exactly, is yeah. off, and so it that makes it incumbent upon us as the adults to be like, mm, something not quite right about that compliment, or right. you know, or that the way you're coming at me, like you said, you know, what do you want? Like, yeah. come on, yeah. really? What, yeah, because what you, yeah, it's a signal. Mm -hmm. Do okay. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That that's exactly why we named it that. Well, let's watch a video and see what some of the kids say about it. So usually whenever my mom won't, um, she's like working or something and I can't get her attention, 
I usually yell at her like this. Mom! Mommy! Mama. Mama. Mama! Mom, where are you? If I don't tell you this, I'm gonna like die. It gets her every single time. <laughs> What if you wanted to do something and your mommy said no to you? What would you say to her? Oh, first you would pout? Please. Well, do you no. ever say, like, oh, my gosh, you're the best mom in the world? Can well, I, I do that with her cooking. Oh. I got, like, a, one of the Post-it notes, mm -hmm. and I um, wrote uh, the steak dinner was really good. Do you know I'm really fast at mountain biking, so, I mean, like, if I... Uh, if I join this, I'd get faster and uh, might get a scholarship and you don't have to pay for my college, who knows? What if we were quiet the whole day and we didn't ask you for anything? Like, you're so nice and stuff, so please, and we won't bother you so you can have your sleep. Are those no boots? You got a haircut. That's a great outfit. I really like your outfit. And now she's looking at me, she's like, I, you're, you're manipulating me. And I'm like, manipulating you? I could never. I have too much love for you to do that. <laughs> so, does any of that sound familiar? You know, I think my daughter is the most beautiful, mm -hmm. yellow, beautiful daughter. When she is magnetic, mm -hmm. I mean, I will move heaven and earth to do whatever she wants. And I can see her serving others, mm -hmm. you know, working hard, taking her own money, spending it for, for others. That's such a different feeling than um, buttering me up mm -hmm. and, and being phony. You said magnetic mm -hmm. and phony. Mm -hmm. Those feel really, really different from this side. It's yeah. like one side, it went magnetic, I want to do everything for. Mm -hmm. And phony, I see right through it. It's, yep. you know, not so fun. Well, what about, because I feel like I have, I may have a niece that's a yellow. Okay. And she can be a bit much. Mm -hmm. And especially when when she wants your attention. Mm -hmm. So she's already got a lot of energy and mm -hmm. very bubbly and sweet as punch. Like, I, I love her to mm -hmm. pieces. But when it gets to that point where she wants the attention, mm -hmm. it's like she's off the Richter scale. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, chill, little girl, mm -hmm. chill. <laughs> like, I need you to calm down. Mm -hmm. Or you're doing too much. But then she, it's almost like she doesn't know how to manage it. Mm -mm. You know, it's almost like, but there's something, it, it makes yes. you think that there's something she needs and yes. she's not getting it, and so she's losing it. And so you almost have to say, okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's, what do you need? And then yes. it'll turn maybe sometime to tears, mm -hmm. you know, because now that she's, now that you've had, you have my undivided mm -hmm. attention, what is it? And she can't articulate it because right. I think she was like six. I'm thinking about a time when she was like yeah. six and she couldn't necessarily say, mm -hmm. well, I don't know her. I want mm -hmm. such and such and such and such. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, okay, well, really? You did all of that just, just a minute say, ago, right? You know, just to say you wanted a cookie? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know. It's very interesting, April, because you've literally, you literally hit on something that we talked about on every single session mm -hmm. because you looked at her and you immediately thought, was from your point of view. You mm -hmm. just need to calm down, mm -hmm. right? That's you looking through your lens at her, mm -hmm. right? And then you wanted to fix her. Remember we said we expect them to respond or react a mm -hmm. certain way, and when they don't, it's a them problem. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then you learned that it's not really a them problem, mm -hmm. that I have to change my lens. Mm -hmm. You're now looking at somebody who speaks a different language. language. Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at her a signal's going off, but now you know attention, affection, approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know inspiration, encouraging, creative, imaginative. Mm -hmm. So That's now good. you have all kinds of words that you can talk to this little girl, right? Yeah. You're going to stop and give her focus and say, I can see you want to tell me a story. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you mm -hmm. looking for? Mm -hmm. I just want you to help me to get a cookie. A cookie? All this for a cookie? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, baby girl. We're mm -hmm. going to get a cookie. Yeah. The thing I like about that, Kathleen, mm -hmm. is oftentimes when that happens with our kids mm -hmm. and I see those, it's almost the perversion of the strength or the mm -hmm. excessiveness of the strength. I want to move to discipline, mm -hmm. which um, I think because that was the home that I grew up in. Yep. And it's so helpful. And I'm not saying there aren't times when we need to do that, but oh, it's absolutely. so much better to move to a place of compassion mm -hmm. to go, oh, there's something that's missing. There's something that they need. That's such a better, I feel like it's a healthier way to parent than just immediately, right. you need to stop. You need to be different. You need mm -hmm. to fix that. You need yes. to change that. Um, it's, uh, it, it feels like a higher level 
of parenting. It's the black belt yeah. of parenting. Well, it is yeah. the black belt of parenting, which I happen to know well. So here's the thing that, just because I like martial arts, not because I'm a black belt in parenting. I like martial arts. But that's exactly what I love to teach, is because this is what most parents do. Mm-hmm. They stop, they see the behavior, and they want to lecture and correct. They want to correct it, yeah. Okay. I'm asking parents and teachers and coaches and counselors to do something totally different. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be comfortable out of the gate until Mm -hmm. you're fluent at the temperaments. But I'm asking you to pause, look at the behavior, and think to yourself, what innate need is this connected to? Mm -hmm. What's what signal am I getting here? Mm -hmm. Because remember, again, we said punishing an innate need isn't going to address work. the need. It diminishes it the child. Yeah. You send a red to their room because they're angry that they weren't part of the decision making? Oh, they're plotting revenge. Rip, rip they're not the up there changing yeah. their heart, yeah. right? I've, I've tried that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or you send a yellow to your yeah. their room and then you go up and you say, okay, so you've had time to think about it. Mm-hmm. Think about what? <laughs> you know, it's gone. Flash in the pan, gone. They don't mm-hmm. even know what they were talking about. You know, do you see? Mm-hmm. So we want to really pause and go, hmm, what innate need is this hooked to? And how can we influence or direct them mm-hmm. to choose a strength over a weakness? Mm-hmm. So teaching them how to use their powers for good and not for exactly. evil. Exactly. <laughs> what are you, exactly. raising Superman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So let's talk about reds. Remember, the innate needs for reds are loyalty, sense of control, appreciation, and credit for work. Mm -hmm. So when these needs aren't being met, the red will turn to... Anger. (laughs) Anger, absolutely, is one of them. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about communication, it's tone and volume. Mm -hmm. Tone and volume. So tone, harsh, biting comments. Volume, becoming louder Mm -hmm. and louder. Angry, you know or yelling, angry outbursts, Mm -hmm. right? So what does this look like practically? I have this great story of a dear friend of mine who she's yellow, but her daughter is red. And so, you know, again, red temperaments surface very early. And so I wanna say she was maybe 18 months old and she's in the crib and she wakes up and her immediate thing, a red in a crib, is how can I take over this household? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But really, you know, she wants loyalty, right? So she says, mom, mom, and my friend doesn't come. Mom. So then she turns to Jenny. (laughs) Jenny. Starts calling her name. (laughs) First name. Starts calling her. (laughs) You know, and this mom didn't even know she knew her first name, right? Mm -hmm. But that's a red. So, you know, exactly. So why don't we take a look at how a red response if their needs were not being met. When you are getting frustrated with your mom or annoyed, give me the face that you would do to her. Like what I usually do do like an eye roll. Like, (laughs) oh God. (laughs) Kind of like look her up and down. Like Like that. (laughs) So you have a plan and you've delegated well to your sisters to help and nobody's doing what you asked them to do. I would be really mad. Yeah, and what would that look like? You did not do what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You did not listen to me. I told you what to do and I'm just gonna do it. Tell me about something that made you mad recently. When my brothers wouldn't play with me. Yeah. I just started getting mad and I started a fight. Mm. It comes off my tone and volume. Mm-hmm. That's how, like, that's how you can tell I'm perturbed, mm-hmm. is I will definitely use my tone. Ma! Ugh. Mm. You're not the boss of me. I either scream her name, Jenny, mm-hmm. or I call her mother. Mom, mom, mother, Jenny, mom! Wow. Reds, I just love that, like we said the other day, you really can't miss them, right? (laughs) Right? So does anybody have any stories that sound familiar with tone and volume? Oh, yeah. I'm remembering um, a time when my, my red son was younger, and he had been asked by his school to... Perform. He's a performer. Okay. And he had been asked with a few of his friends to get some of his friends together and to do a temptation song at mm-hmm. a black history program at school. 
Yeah. He loves the temptations. Yeah, but one thing about my son is that he's he he wants to get stuff done really right <laughs> when he's going to do it. And so he knew all the moves. Mm -hmm. He had practiced. He knew every note, everything that was supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. He was very meticulous about things like that. And um, so he got his friends together, and they all agreed yeah. to do it with him. Okay. So one day he comes home from school from practice, and he's just throwing stuff down. He's mad. I'm like, well, what's wrong with you? I quit. I'm not going to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I was like, why? What are you talking about? I don't want to do it. I was like, what is wrong? He said, they won't practice, mom. They won't <laughs> practice. They won't get it right. And his, I mean, he was just off. They won't yeah. pick up the sticks. They won't pick yeah. up the, they, <laughs> the they red won't get it picking done. Up. He was like, we got to do this in such and such amount of time. And they're behind. And he was so done. Right. And I was just like, dude, you have to be patient with your friends. They weren't like him. Mm. Mm -hmm. They weren't like him. They weren't, it wasn't as important to mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. to get every step, you know, right or whatever. And his volume was just, and even now I think about his volume, mm -hmm. but, you know, he, when he wants you to hear him mm -hmm. and when he wants to be understood or yes. all that kind of stuff and he yeah. feels like you're not hearing him, yeah. he gets so high in his volume. <laughs> and, I'm, and I literally, I'll do this. I'm right here. Yeah. Like, right here. And he was like, no, mom, just let me talk. And yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. So it really does go back again, though, to yeah. you. What we want to do is listen to understand, yeah. not listen to reply, right? And even be very conscious of the words we use because what we just talked about is the lenses. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? I'm just curious about this, April. Mm -hmm. What now that you know what you know? Mm -hmm. When you say to a red, you just have you just have to you just need to be patient. It drives him nuts. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Right, right, right. right. You might as well yeah. have just pushed gasoline on the fire, right? right? But what he yeah. was doing was he saw that he needed to, you know, there was work that had to be done. Mm -hmm. And what innate need do you think he was taking a direct hit at? Mm. Refresh me on what they are. Loyalty, appreciation, credit for work. Yes. I sense think, of control. Yeah, it's the sense of control and the credit for work because he was asked to get the group together. That's right. So if they looked a mess, it was his fault. And he was not about to have that. Right? And, <laughs> and then he walked in. Not yeah. taking responsibility for something that you know is not going to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he would, at that point, he would just I'm rather out. say, you know, well, we're just not going to do it because I'm not going to get up here and let y'all make this. Because he would definitely say it was everybody else's fault. Fun. He blamed. You know, right? you know, but yeah, absolutely. You so, see how all these dots yeah. are connecting? So, Kathleen, as the Yoda, can you <laughs> right. help us? We're yeah. young Jedis. Yes. How should yes. I have better, how yes. should I have best responded? Because I know then I did tell him, you're going to have to be patient and all this other kind of, because that's me. And, I'm a be patient person and, yes, and work cool. with them until they yeah. kind of understand mm -hmm. and all this other kind of stuff. And he was just like, no, absolutely But think not. about the innate needs. Mm -hmm. Credit for work. Mm -hmm. He put the work in. He went in there. The cogs weren't all working. Nobody was pulling their weight. They were not being loyal. Right? They were and not then, being loyal. His right? loyalty they, took a big hit. Ex yes. Exactly. Huge, because he doesn't feel like a team. Right, right. Exactly. exactly. And then the anger, right? Mm -hmm. um, but first, you know, the anger. And then with that anger, that leaked out and spelled tone and volume. Mm -hmm. Because even when he was experiencing it, remember what we learned in the other session validate, compliment, mm -hmm. speak their language. Okay. So now, so now I would say, you know what? You're doing a great job teaching them. I know it may be taking them some time, but you're doing such a good job and you guys are going to be amazing at mm -hmm. the show. Just keep going, you know, something you're like right. that. Something yeah. like that. Gosh, I really appreciate mm -hmm. you taking all the, time the hard to do this. work that yeah. you did that. That must have taken so many days to mm -hmm. put together all those steps. And I can see that you're angry. Mm-hmm. That they're not really being loyal and showing up to practice. Okay, so validating. So, yeah, I'd be yeah, angry. You know, I, I can understand be, why I you're could, angry. You don't have to be angry, too. It's kind right. of like the sensitivity <laughs> okay. with the blue. Because why are you angry? You didn't do the temptation steps, right? right? So we don't want to ever <laughs> lie to our children. Right. But you can validate that he's he's angry, yeah. right? And then you can say, but everything in me believes yeah, that's what I was going to say. That you mm -hmm. are going to reach this goal because that's what you're built for. Yeah. Yes. What we're learning to do with our red daughter is mm -hmm. when we see the the volume and the tone mm -hmm. and we start experiencing that stress, which sends our green child into the other room, yes. uh, into the corner of the other room. Yes. Uh, we trying to help, trying to come into their world to help support 
but to not say, well, let me tell you the way we're going to do it, but mm-hmm. to find out the way she was planning on doing it and trying to support in that way. Mm-hmm. And she's got a, our red daughter has a little cookie business. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. She, Bakes uh, like entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. She's an entrepreneur. Your, your dad would be so. <laughs> you can put them in the vending machines. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, but she'll do a you know a cookie cake for a mm-hmm. neighbor's birthday or nice. something like that. And um, the other day, she, you could feel the stress that she was. Uh, you, rarely happen. Usually she's got so much control. She's got it under control. There's no stress. I mean, mm-hmm. she's just like knocking it out. Yep. But this particular moment, um, the, the deadline was quickly approaching. Mm-hmm. And I tried to come in and support, but then I tried to change the way she was doing it. Oof. Mm. Not, not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... What's that? You're, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she fired me. That's right. So I got to find some new help. Um, but learning to come in and go, okay, you tell me how you were planning on doing it. Yes. And then help me find a way to come in and help support you in that. Because mm-hmm. to try to take the control away and say, well, we have an hour left and here's where we're going to do it to get it done. Mm-hmm. Not a great way mm-hmm. to maintain the relationship. Yes. <laughs> Does anybody hear the word that he used probably about six times in that story? Support. Support. Brian, if you think you're red, what word would you have liked to hear at that time? I would like, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. You tell me what to do. You tell me what to do, and then she get the A, B, and C. You know, get the oven ready. Mm -hmm. You know, mix the flour, whatever. That's right. And she could have sent you. She didn't didn't need a whole lot of words. No. What does the word support imply to you? If you're red. That I need help or or that that there's gaps in the plan. Mm -hmm. Like, she, as a red, I'm sure your daughter would much rather delegate that, right? I've got the task. I know it. I just need some help. Because remember, she can do it on her own. Yes. Right. yes. Left on her own. Yes. She's independent enough to pull it off. Yeah. And in the last hour, she will pull it off. So the word support even. So now we're when we're thinking of being fluent, I want you to even think right down to the words we're using. Because again, the innate needs, the strength and weakness chart, those are cheat sheets. Mm -hmm. So now when you go back to your red daughter today, I want you to be thinking red words. Mm -hmm. And I want you to really watch how that transforms her responses to you. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, now that we're talking about signals, what were some of the signals that you saw with her? Yeah, it felt like some baking challenge show where you know you had the <laughs> clock and it's like ticking down. Yeah. And I come in and say, all right, it's almost like I was rescuing her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just immediately saw, um, well, there was, yeah, there was anger. I mean, mm-hmm. there was, no, I'm doing it this way. Mm-hmm. She started talking like Brent, just real, like <laughs> owning her words, you know. And um, Didn't you see the clock, though? Exactly, <laughs> yes, that, that, uh, the volume goes up. I know what I'm doing. Uh-huh. I think she mm-hmm. uh, immediately started saying things about, she felt like I was questioning her plan or questioning mm-hmm. her ability to handle it. Mm-hmm. So she immediately started defending her ability to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, so but, you saw all of them. You saw the tone. You saw the volume. I listen, I have yeah. the benefit now of the, you know, Monday morning quarterback. So the hindsight's twenty twenty. Yes. In the moment, I mean, yeah. that pause, I think, is what is so revolutionary for me. Yes. Is I wish I would have stopped in the moment to listen to those. But as I yes. think back on it now, yes. I can see all those. Yes. I think going forward, I'm going to be so much better. Yes, you are. <laughs> because that's the whole point is you cannot unhear what we're hearing. Mm -hmm. So now it's literally a choice. Am I gonna choose to love her better? Mm -hmm. And am am I gonna initiate that pause to connect those dots, to see this signal and see what behavior, Mm -hmm. and then what can I do to step in to lift them up according to their needs and benefit all who listen? Mm -hmm. See, if we put in the time now, what is that gonna look for her five years from now? Well, it just builds her confidence yeah. and it just makes her really know that I can accomplish anything. And Yeah, and even be humble enough to say, hey, Dad, yeah. I have a deadline. Yeah. I would Could love you, it if you would get me the pan and the spatula. Right. Could mm-hmm. you come support me? Do you see? Right. Yeah, and, and that's it, one thing I noticed about uh, my red son is that when he desires help, he'll ask for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I had to learn over time mm-hmm. just to say, you know, if you need my help, just let me know, mm-hmm. you know. I see what you're doing. Go right ahead. If you need my help, let me know. Mm-hmm. And if they need, if he needs it, mm-hmm. he'd, he'd ask me. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like when the green speaks up, we want to listen because mm-hmm. they. 
do not say a lot of words. Mm -hmm. If a red indicates that they need assistance, we want to listen because that rarely happens. That's good. Right? So now I want to talk about the blues. Safety, sensitivity, support, space, and silence. Mm -hmm. So when these innate needs are not being filled, they send off a signal, mm -hmm. right? They resort to moods in silence. These are the signals that they're going to give out. So moods are being judgmental, critical, or self-deprecating. And silence is being disengaged, unwilling to talk or hear from others, right? So what does this practically look like? This looks like they walk in and they're obviously in a mood and you say, oh, what's wrong? And they go, hmm, I can see that something's wrong. Is there something wrong? Hmm, I don't know. Well, did something happen at school? Hmm, maybe. Okay, they love to play that 20 question game because really what they're thinking is when I walk in and I have that face, if you really loved me and understood me, you would not be asking those questions. Mm. You would be absolutely just right now understanding how I feel. You would be sensitive to you how I feel. You would be understanding, right? So let's take a look and see how a blue responds when their innate needs are not being met. Is there any times where you get disappointed and you feel like they've said no or haven't allowed you to do what you want? I go to my room, mm -hmm. I stay in there for a little bit, calm myself down, mm -hmm. and go in and ask them why. What do you do when you're mad? I go upstairs in my room. Yeah. What are you doing when you're in your room? I'm usually just laying in my bed. Mm -hmm. and when I'm really frustrated, I like cl lock myself in my room or mm -hmm. try to just get away and read something mm -hmm. or stop what I'm doing because yeah. it's really annoying me. I like go to my room mm -hmm. and just stay in there for a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit of time to calm down. I'd be in my sister's room, but I don't let her come in my room because they always touch my stuff, move places and stuff, and I have to clean it up, so that's why I don't let them in there. Yeah, because it's your room. How yeah. do you have it? My rules. Your rules? Mm-hmm. So what do we think about that video? <laughs> that had a lot of information, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody have a blue that they're thinking about? I've got a blue that— You have a blue? Yeah, that stands out so much because uh, my oldest daughter, just even— um, in elementary school, and especially as she moved into middle school, um, would, if she got frustrated with something that was going on, like you said, at, at school or at home, mm -hmm. she would kind of just exacerbate, <laughs> like just, ah, and then usually go away, um, kind of go to her room, be alone. And really what she always wanted, I found out, was me to come and come in her room and sit down on her on her bed and talk to her and find out, ask mm -hmm. the 20 questions. Mm -hmm. uh, she, although she was always frustrated if I didn't get in at about three. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> to find out what was going on and how she was feeling about it. Um, I mean, that just, there's so many times I can hear, see the, huh, and then going away, you know, the back of her walking away from me. Was there some um, signs before those signals that you could see coming? Like She's any so of the thoughtful, mm -hmm. like so kind of her emotions are usually she holds them close. Mm, yes. Um, so not very vocal about mm -hmm. it. And there's a lot of other people being vocal in our house. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say just getting quiet and frustrated. Mm -hmm. I mean, that definitely like even, you know, if she she loves to be in the kitchen and bake something, if she gets frustrated because things aren't in order or what whatever's going mm -hmm. on, there's there can be some. Yeah. You know. So that frustration is on the weakness side, right? Mm -hmm. And then you just said that. They, they like order. And it's very interesting that perfection is on both sides. It's a, it's a strength and it's a weakness. Mm -hmm. Because on the weakness side, it's not only perfection, but its standards are too high. Mm. Like it's right? never good enough. It's never good enough. Mm. The people are never doing it good yeah, enough. I find when, so. even when someone tells her she's done a good mm -hmm. job, um, it's hard for her to receive that unless yes. she considers that she did a good job herself. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then she went to the signals, mm -hmm. right? She yeah. went right into mood and silence, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. mood. The mood and then the silence. Yeah. Away, yeah. yeah. So how do you, how did you deal with that and how might you deal with that now? I think there's been times where I've said, come back here. 
you know, don't walk away from me. Ooh. You know, that, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. I, I hate, it. it just feels so terrible to have all mm -hmm. of that energy walk away mm -hmm. and, and just such an affront to like, we were talking and mm -hmm. I'm trying to work it out and you just walked away. Mm -hmm. That is so irritating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just so much expected of me in that it feels like she's saying, do you, how much are you gonna fight for me? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna love me in this way? Like, yes. I, I'm asking you to come all the way to my room mm -hmm. and slow down, put away everything that you're doing mm -hmm. and show sensitivity. Yeah. And there's just not always that amount of time to no. show support and sensitivity in that way. Well, yes and or no. Or it feels that yeah, way. It feels that way yeah. probably. But again, the, the one thing that blues really want everybody to know is they wanna feel like they're fought for. They want to feel like they're included. They want to feel like they're not going to be abandoned. She wants to know that you would come to her room mm. and show sensitivity to ask. And remember what we talked about the other day, really, truly understanding. You don't have to agree with it, mm -hmm. but matching that feeling and emotion, right? And I'm telling you, the time you put in now has a huge payoff. Mm -hmm. Because remember, they're the purity and the temperament mm -hmm. until the world tells them differently. And again, what we're trying to do is we're not trying to scare our children, remember, or filter them. We're trying to prepare them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could hear my wife telling my kids over and over, you know, prepare the child for the road, not the road for the child. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have hardships. And we don't need to be the ones that jump in for the to make the call to the teacher. They mm -hmm. need to advocate for themselves. But mm -hmm. you just, something just clicked with me, as you mm -hmm. said, um, as I'm thinking about my blue son and and just his, his wrestling, mm -hmm. he outgrew my abilities mm -hmm. when he, by the time he was 16, I couldn't hang with him anymore. And it always, I was wondering, why did he still want me on the mat? He always wanted me right beside him. It, even though he had coaches that, mm -hmm. that you know, were, were nationally renowned and whatnot, the not abandoned and fought for. Yep. So I'm like, that that made sense. Why I want to mm -hmm. be there? And, and I'm just thinking through how he would get off the mat and immediately he wanted to see the iPad. Mm -hmm. And he would just get stuck in these moods and silence and watch the film over and over. And I know it sounds crude, but I just have to finally say, I'm like, hey, Cole, learn what you can out of this. <laughs> Piss on the rest and forget it. <laughs> you know, be done with it. So he is sending off some signals of, you know, moods and silence. What were some of the things before that? You said critical. He was being judgmental Hyper, of this other. Hypercritical mm -hmm. of himself. Mm -hmm. And he should have known better. And, and by the way, there, there's no kid that I've ever met or adult mm -hmm. that will put in more time. Mm -hmm. Like he would do it before school, after school. Uh, you know, he would come home, he, he, he would lose 10 pounds during a practice mm -hmm. just because he would put so much into it. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, how could you prepare anymore? How could you have known anything else? Mm -hmm. And it was always being fluid in the match that was always the challenge. Yep. And it's like, things are gonna happen in life that you just didn't see coming. Mm. Be, you know, you have prepared. Mm -hmm. Be, you know, be confident in your abilities. Mm -hmm. And, and the work that you did, yeah. and, and that doesn't always seem to translate yeah, Because to remember way. when we said some words and you go, oh no, you know, when she said, you know, be patient, okay? You saying to a blue, just be confident. <laughs> that, see, you're <laughs> doing the same laugh he did, <laughs> right? Because how do, if you're blue, how does that land with you? You just can't be confident. <laughs> you have to work up, mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's almost like a conjuring, up. Mm -hmm. and in a self like for all the deprecation that mm -hmm. happens, you have to go in and totally reverse that. That's mm -hmm. just not a B. No. On the positive side, mm -hmm. what about I, I like how he said uh, how much he believes in the work that his son was putting in. Mm -hmm. That feels like great communication to say, hey. No one has put in more work than you. Exactly. I respect that so much. Exactly. Way to go. Yeah. Sometimes things happen that are out of your control, but mm -hmm. you couldn't have done more. Mm -hmm. yeah. That feels like yeah, a great that's better. Yeah. Say yeah. And, blue. and that's what we're kind of going for mm -hmm. because really what we're wanting to put in place, especially for a blue, is a plan B. Mm. Every blue I'm gonna encourage to have a plan B. My daughter had a first grade teacher who would always tell her, can you adjust your vision? 
Mm. How can you adjust? Or, which is a way of saying, what's your plan B? What's your plan yeah. B? I, so and what's your, I, what's your I rain stole plan? that one right from her and have mm -hmm. used it ever since. It, that reminds me of my blue son that would study for something and then he knew there was a potential to get 104 on a, an exam. And he would come in just like with that moon. And I'd go, hey, buddy, tell me something. I see that you're down. Because remember, we want to validate. I don't want to just say, hey, chip her up. But, and he'd go, well, I failed. And I'd be like, really? What happened? Tell me, what, what was it? 97? <laughs> because in his mind. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a 104. It wasn't a 104. <laughs> Okay, it was still an A, it was still passing, but that was not what he had in his mind. So we would immediately go to, so what's your plan B? Right there, there's seven points that there's something that you don't know. Isn't this gonna be interesting to research it and find it out, right? So let's now talk about our greens, mm. right? You said so they're your favorite. They are my favorite. I happen to be married to a green mm. for several decades. So I have gotten very used to loving greens, right? <laughs> so the innate needs are harmony, mm -hmm. feeling of worth, mm -hmm. lack of stress, and respect. So when their innate needs are not being filled, they will resort to procrastination and stubbornness. Okay, so what procrastination looks like is delaying or ignoring responsibilities and stubbornness is refusing to converse or to compromise. Hmm. Right? I know what that looks like. Do you know what that looks when like? When you say that, I think about as a kid on Saturday morning, I think I might have mentioned it, like uh -huh. my mom was a list maker and she would have a list for us on Saturday morning, wake up, get all the chores out. I know mm -hmm. what she's thinking because as a mom, I think the same thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, but she really was, you know, big on her list and uh, and I just wanted to sleep in. Mm. I just wanted to watch Saturday morning cartoons. I couldn't watch those on demand, so that was certain times, yes. and certain things, and yeah. that was my plan. And I I probably frustrated her to death because I would just yeah. I would withdraw. I would procrastinate. Mm. I would. You would just do it all. I was probably invisible. Like I'd find yeah. something. <laughs> find some place yeah. to go and some place to hide yeah. about it. Did you ever talk to her before that? I'm just curious. Was there any? What were what were the things that led up to that? I'm just. Uh, I don't know that there was much. When you were talking earlier, I think I would have really appreciated if she'd asked me, hey, what's your plan? Like you mm -hmm, were saying, mm -hmm. what's your plan? Because then maybe we could have either, I, I know she wouldn't have wanted to push it off, but I, I wonder if she had said, hey, you can do it Friday night or mm -hmm. you can do it mm -hmm. when you get home from uh, school on Friday and then you can sleep in on, you know. For her, it was just getting it done. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking she might have been blue okay. <laughs> um, with her list, but um, uh, it, it would have given me a chance to kind of order things yes. in a way that would have prioritized what I wanted to. Yeah. And probably motivated you a little more. Probably. I mean, yeah. probably gotten it done faster because I had a choice yeah. as to where to put it. There you go. The stubbornness is helpful for me because when I think of the green, understanding a green the way I, I'm starting to understand a green, I don't I don't think about the stubbornness. I think about the harmony. I think about mm -hmm. the... Um, the the need for peace, mm -hmm. um, and but stubbornness sometimes looks like other colors, yep. and that's a maybe a part of the struggle that we have in identifying one of our kids yeah. is his stubbornness can come out in moodiness mm -hmm. and even anger. Some of the signals for some of the other colors, even mm -hmm. is that. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we watch what innate lo needs look like? Maybe that would be helpful that aren't being met, and let's see what a green child might say. If the teacher gives you assignment says, due in 14 days, when are you starting it? Um, probably the day it's due. You know what procrastination means? <laughs> Me. <laughs> How do you define procrastination? <laughs> procrastination is putting off for tomorrow what can be done today. I am a big procrastinator. <laughs> My mom's always like, have you done your homework? And I'm yeah. like, I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happens when you do it? I don't get stuff done in time. And like that ends up that I have to do like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like if there's like a school assignment mm -hmm. and I'm not interested in it, mm -hmm. I will for sure wait last minute to get it done. Mm -hmm. I try to finish it like the day 
right when I get it, but mm -hmm. that never happens. Mm -hmm. And I end up doing it like the last night I can do it. So you do it right at the end and then you pull it through, right? <laughs> yeah. If I have a choice, I'll put it off. Do you get in trouble for it? Every once in a while, yeah. Yeah? What about stubbornness? I'm pretty stubborn yeah. when it comes to certain things. Like, I don't know. Like, if it's something I really don't want to do, I'm like, can someone else do it? Like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Would you consider yourself stubborn? Yeah. Yeah? If I'm told to do, like, chores or something, mm -hmm. I'll kind of avoid it until they tell me that I have to do it. Mm -hmm. Has your mom ever made you do something you not, didn't want to do? Yes. Yes? It was called the Jingle Jog. I had to wake up early. Mm -hmm. Then we went there, and I was so, and I was just pouting on the way there. Yeah. I was like this to the window. <laughs> <laughs> so this is exactly what they feel, right? When they're not, these needs aren't being met. So let's continue with what, is that what you were talking about with your son? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think you know, the that, it, that stubbornness can just look so different mm -hmm. for so many different kids. Mm -hmm. even. Uh, we, we have a, our, our middle daughter is primarily green. Okay. And she, um, she's just the easiest kid, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's just very compliant mm -hmm. and she's very peaceful. But there are times when you're trying to get her motivated to mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. um, that season of life that so we all went through during the pandemic where mm -hmm. school was virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, virtual school doesn't uh, seem like it fits really well for a green <laughs> temperament. Um, Not unless they're interested. That's exactly right. And so uh, her and my wife butted heads a lot around um, just the order in which she would get her schoolwork done because mm -hmm. my wife is primarily blue. And so mm -hmm. she would, a little bit like your story of your mom with mm -hmm. the chores. I mean, my wife has an order for how she would want her to do her day, mm -hmm. that you would finish your virtual school and then you would start your homework. Mm -hmm. But being a green child, she mm -hmm. did not want it in that order. Mm -hmm. She needed some downtime, mm -hmm. some chill, some relaxing time. Mm -hmm. She does not have the t-shirt that mm -hmm. you get it done and then yeah. get to the fun. <laughs> yeah. She does not yeah. understand that. And, and isn't that interesting that you said that with Brent about his son's story? Yep. Because you even asked, well, do they have to do the work right when they get there? <laughs> right. And now do you see that your daughter's probably saying totally. the exact same thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And But I want to even go back to Brent. We're going to crosstalk here for a minute because what, that story was fantastic mm -hmm. about just the whole thing about innate needs, right? He was procrastinating. You couldn't find him. There was things to do. There was signals being sent off. Oh, all over. <laughs> True. I mean, the, the stubbornness, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking lazy, didn't want to do it. He's procrastinating. We already had a discussion about it needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And, and so, when you said discussion, tell us more about that. <laughs> <laughs> we had a command how about that, an order, right? Yeah. So, so to me, mm -hmm. it felt like insubordination, right? Mm -hmm. So wow. he went, he went, he went AWOL. Yeah. I mean, he was yeah. gone. You can't yeah. find him, and he's yeah. ready to take yeah. pictures and uh, of his of his cousin. And I'm like, it's not the time. Yeah. It's just not. But the here's time. let's back up because this is really an important point. What you're bringing up, and I want to make sure that we're not missing it through talking about this. When you're driving your car, do you wait till it's sputtering on the side of the road That's a great to go? Point. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. where's the closest gas station? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do any of you do that? Mm. So, this is a signal, which means we don't want to wait until the procrastination hits mm. and the stubbornness hits. We don't want to wait for charm and flattery. We don't want to wait for moods and silence. That's when we've gotten too far. Mm. That's an empty tank. We're watching for the weaknesses, trying to fill the tank, and that's when the red flags go up. Because no longer are they using their strengths, and, and why not? What's Are we not slowing down? Are we not paying attention, mm. right? Are we not hearing them? Are we not understanding them? I'm from Michigan, so we never, our gauge was when it hit a quarter of a tank, you went to the gas station, mm -hmm. because you never wanted to get stuck no, on you're a Michigan also, road you're also, with an empty, right? You're consistent with your blue temperament exactly, too, right? <laughs> exactly. So what I'm saying is these weaknesses hitting the tank, yeah. those, well, that's the red flag. We, we actually never want to get to the actual blinking red light yeah. signal. 
one of the things I love about your message, Kathleen, yeah. is that it's it, you do bring a lot of hope that mm -hmm. it is never too late. No. You can start right now from where you are. And yes. I, if I start to, if I've ignored the procrastination, the stubbornness in the past, right. I can start now. Mm -hmm. Now I know it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also like the message that you don't have to wait until you see those signals to start speaking the language. Exactly. That is not when we need to start speaking the language of our green. We need to exactly. start. Uh, Today, on, to, now. <laughs> right, on Sunday night before the school week. Exactly. Right, in the morning before school has even happened. Let's exactly. start. Exactly. Okay, I know you're not going to want to plan out the whole day because mm -hmm. I want to leave some room for spontaneity. But at the same time, I know there's going to be some homework today. Mm -hmm. And I exactly. don't want you to have to feel that feeling of your teacher being disappointed because you haven't gotten it done. Right. So let's talk through how can we, mm -hmm. when, when do you want to get it done? What would be the best time for you? Asking their opinion. Not using, com look, <laughs> that was, that was a great way. Oh <laughs> she wants God. to do schoolwork right now just from your statement, <laughs> right? Because that's exactly what I'm talking about. If you're choosing to build up, a lot of times we won't even get to those signals. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I like how Clay said it, you know, speaking the green language or the mm -hmm. language before the indicators, because usually that's when I would try to jump in. Okay, what are my mm -hmm. what are my keywords here for green? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, you've given me that visual now of already hitting the guardrail, mm -hmm. and probably yeah. over. Yeah. Which is all of our Cliff. tendency, because my oh. tendency is to speak in all yellow words. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the people that I work with joke with me that everything is awesome, everything is great all the time. Mm -hmm. It's and the way I talk. Oh, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It's wonderful. And what do you think I'm thinking right now? <laughs> BS. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, uh, you're thinking <laughs> that can't be true. Mm -hmm. That's inauthentic. That's not real. Mm -hmm. That's not real. You even said, let's plan the day so we can have spontaneity. And I thought, I don't think that's what she wants. Mm -hmm. It's probably that she wants some lack of stress. Oh, that's a great point. Even you that's my language. That's ears. what I want. I want to leave some room for let's, the fun. Yeah. You wanted the fun. That's she right. might want to that's relax. Exactly right. And I guess that's what I was trying to say is that mm -hmm. we all... You, of course, you naturally speak that language. Yes. So any other language is going to be extra mind work, which yes. is effort. It takes practice, 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 practice. right? That That's it really exactly and intentionality right. to try to That's it. think about that, yeah. anticipate what yes. the green is going to want to hear. Yeah. So is there anybody else alive that can flip through the languages <laughs> without all the work? We can other all, than you, we I can mean, all do the work, and that's great because you know what? It takes practice to become yeah. fluent. It takes application and practice. So in the book, there are tips that you can use when your child or the children in front of you start signaling their innate needs. Mm -hmm. Next week, though, we're going to turn the tables. And we're gonna start talking about the four of you. If you don't know it yet, there's an assessment in the book or there's a digital assessment. And I'm gonna ask you to take that before we meet again.